This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, we are going into the grocery store, but we're gonna do something a little small, like a reach-in cooler. Let's go take a look at the fresh get-and-go cooler we got going on. You never know, something extravagant could happen. Look at that beauty. So we've got the faster for you. Let's find out what's going on here. I just came in here, seeing it wasn't on the rack, and thought, well, let's go grab the camera and the knee pads, because we don't want to go crippled any sooner than we need to. Let's take a look at this Dixel. So we're at 55 degrees. It looks like we got a fan, we got lights, and we got snowflakes. We got fan running there, and we got fan running there. So our vaps are working. Let's take a peek-a-poo at our actual evaporator. They made this thing usually just barely big enough to get anything out. They designed that with no thought process at all in there. Nope. I suppose you can flip it upside down and flip it in there like that. All right. Feeling in the back. There is a temperature sensor right there. Another temperature sensor right there, it looks like. So we got two temperature sensors. The coil is not frozen. Probably slightly dirty. And eh, not horrid. So we probably got a refrigeration issue down here on bottom. This thing's a, a, a kajobber to get into. Now I will tell you, do not lose this little burger. It is important if you don't have that there. That just hooks there and there. You will have spillage where your cooling will sneak out the front. Looks like we've got us a nice little filter in there, which is good. To help catch some of the nasty dirt. Um, these don't get the dirtiest in the world, but it does help. Okay, we got lots of greatness here. Looks like that's a temp sensor or something. Looked on that corner somehow. They kind of got it so you can't just shank it up very easily. See, I got this stupid thing just killing you. There we go. There we go. Little to nothing back here to grab a hold of. Might be better off just move this stupid thing forward than it is to screw with it trying to come at it from the front. That thing is packed full of crap. Holy cow. Yeah, you can blast it out with air, but man, that's gonna make a hellacious mess. It looks like there's a new capillary tube there. It's been replaced. Got a new dryer. There's a capacitor all taped up and hanging, and I think there's a start capacitor in here hanging. There's our three fans, you can see there and there. You can see that you can't see. You know what I'm saying? You can't see that you can see, but you can see that you can't see. Got a little heater element there, no water in the pan. Looks like the original compressor, unless they cut it back here. All right, let's, um, let's get some pressures on there. It smells stinky, not horrible stinky, but not that happy stinky either. Still waiting for the controller to come on. Well, according to that, we have a snowflake, and I'm pretty sure the snowflake means that it's actually running the compressor. Set for 36, it's 75. It's still not running yet. Condenser fans are running, but the compressor's not running. Ooh, forgot to t touch the compressor. So the compressor's hotter than heck. Extremely hot. So we have a problem with our compressor. So that's the reason why I do the hand touch method where I'm constantly touching things to see if they're hot or cold or what's going on. Well, the compressor is very hot. Let's see if we can unplug this thing so we don't get electrocuted. And we'll take it apart and start checking the start components and stuff. Oh yeah. Sure, it's probably 230 volt. Here's your start relay. It's warm, but I think everything's warm. Boy, she is hot. She is hot to trot. There's the start capacitor, which it's nice and hot also. No bleed resistors. 
let's short this to make sure. Because I'd rather it blow the compress capacitor up than it is to shock my crap. Check the obvious crap first. You may end up finding the compressor bad. The start capacitor comes in at 93 microfarad, and this is rated for 88 to 108, so that's not a problem. And it is rated at 25, so we have good start components. Except for we don't know how the relay is, so let's take a peek at the relay here. And you get a little pry here, and a little pry there, and looky there. We are looking in here deep. That right there does not want to let go. So we get a better look at it. That relay is froze. I know it's not froze, but it definitely, that definitely is not in good shape. Definitely not in good shape. So the main thing is, is you need that to be closed so the capacitor is in the circuit. Then when the EMF, back EMF from the compressor gets high enough, it'll make this coil energize, breaking the start relay out of the circuit, which then lets the compressor run without the start capacitor in the circuit. And the run continues to do its job. Should be able to check continuity across the switch by just going across contact point to contact point. Although it looks really horrible, it seems like it's working. So I've got a bad feeling that our compressor is shot. Um, unfortunately, it's super, super stupid hot. We may need to see if we can cool it down. See if it's got an overload in there. The overload could be tripped. Like I said, that condenser coil is stupid dirty. I think what I'm going to do for giggles is just get in there and see if I can clean up that in between. Yeah, it's knocking a lot of the carbon off. There we go. It's not near as bad looking as what it was. There we go. Yeah, it looks like brand new now. Look at that. I don't think it's gonna make a bit of difference. Of course, now it's not touching it. That's bad. <laughs> Whoops. So now we gotta bend it closer to it. Yeah, that's great. So anyhow, you can see that it's clean. That'll make it good enough. It's actually not horribly pitted. It just had a lot of carbon. So we just gotta bend that back. But either way, I'm gonna replace it. But I have a feeling this compressor's bad. So it won't really matter. Take that off. Just gotta move it out of there. It's kinda flimsy the way it's held in there. Now we can bend this so it actually will hit. There we go. So it hits again. Now it's nice and tight and it's actually flat. That just barely touches it. But like I said, it's just a small, just barely touches it. It touches, I mean, it's definitely touching it. It'll be good enough for testing this out. Like I said, it's just gotta stretch this back up, hook the top piece, drop the spring back in, hook that metal piece there like that and put it in a teeter-top position. This is why it matters which side's up. It'd be a lot easier if I could see without having to hold a flashlight. There we go. So, there. It's touching. Shadow there. There we go. So, there we go, that's working. Well, we'll go ahead, place this, like, back in there. Um, actually, at least sideways, don't it? Yeah, so. Uh, mainly doesn't go up and down so we'll go ahead and put this back together and we'll plug it in we'll see if it kicks on if it does we may just need to order a new start relay because here's the thing if it wasn't disengaging you would blow your start capacitor up if you leave it in the circuit it'll blow the start capacitor up run capacitor is fine so it's going out on thermal overload which it's still <clears throat> super flipping hot all right let's go ahead and take a pic of that and let's go ahead and isolate this and see if that um, overload is open or not. We'll check resistance between all three and see if that's truly open. If it is not open, we'll go ahead and get this thing jumped out. So we got it between run and start. So black is supposedly a common, white is start, and red is run. Black is common and run. No.
common start now. Essentially, we can't pull this thing backwards, and we need to get to the top up here, which we can't probably get into that for crap. Okay, you can kind of see now what's going on here. We got the terminals there, and there's that overload right here. It probably will reset here in a second. Like I said, it could be because of dirty condenser coils, which pretty packed full of crap. It was warm a day ago. It was like in the, almost 80, and today it's like 40-something. Ugh. That don't sound very good. Suction's holding in there about 40-ish. It'd be nice to be able to get in here to see if we can get on there without shorting something into ground. Which, like I said, this is just a horrible freaking setup. Thanks a lot, Austria. Pulling seven amps, don't sound the greatest. Suction line's coming back cold, it kinda is. It'll help cool it down some, that'd be nice. We need to clean this coil, blow it out, whatever. And then we need to get the start components replaced. I think they weren't making good contact and that was what was causing our issue. We'll let it run for a little bit here, see if it seizes up. These open cases are pretty, but they're about the most inefficient thing you could ask for. There you go. Yeah, you don't hardly feel any airflow through that thing at all. Hit that with some nitrogen, blast it out. So you gotta be careful, because it's all gonna go fly in that direction. It's just a bad, bad deal. So we're running about 250, which is equivalent to about 105 uh, discharge. It's not horribly bad, really. Uh, you figure it's probably 70 in here, so 80, 90, 100, so it's about 35 over ambient, so it's just a little high. Running a 35 degree evaporator, which sounds about right. So refrigerant-wise, it appears that we're fine. Compressor was overheated. It appears to me that we have start component issue, far as start relay. If that relay wasn't allowing the current through, it would just go off on thermal. So essentially, if it was open, uh, even though it was closed, if it was open, it wouldn't have put the uh, capacitor in the circuit, therefore it wouldn't blow it up, but it also wouldn't start. That's what I think is going on. I clean that up and it's working, but don't know what the normal amperage is on this thing. I can't read the compressor very well. If they need it bad enough, they can run it, but I almost feel like, you know what, you just need to wait till we get done because my luck it won't run. It'll fail, and then they got product back in there and it goes bad because this is not on the rack far as uh, alarms and stuff like that. I went ahead and turned it off. Suction came up just like it did fairly quickly, but that's pretty normal. Um, actually, kind of came up rather quick, I thought, but especially for a cap tube. But let's go ahead and see if this thing will come back on again. Let's watch our meter. It'll take a second for it to go through its delay. Came right on. Third one click. On 8.6. According to this up here, it says 8.6 amps, normal, norm current. Suction's a little slow, come down. Definitely running a little warm. I mean, it's just hard to tell if it's, they got it in there where you can't hardly get to it. The capillary tube just kind of seems slow, slow to respond. That pressure jumped right up there. Still got to clean that out yet. Amperage starting to come back down. Didn't sound as bad as it did the first time. Just seems kind of hefty. I was able to get that cover back up in there. I had to do a little modification to the back side with my Milwaukee saw. It still protects all the wires. I'm gonna go ahead and get this back together. Um, I short cycled it multiple times. Granted, the uh, controller has a time delay in it. And we're going to order new start components, but I am very leery about how hot that thing is running. So I've got my thermometer. I'm going to measure it to see about where it's running at. I usually like to wrap this with uh, black tape around the black cap that would originally went around this. There's just no great way to do this. Okay, let's get a maximum temperature. Hit 100, 182 is max so far.
that's a lot cleaner than what it was. I ain't gonna say it's perfect all the way to the back, but it sure looks pretty dang close to being perfect to the back. Hopefully it all went to back here in the hallway underneath the cut underneath the shelves. Um, if it was more accessible, you could run a wet rag, wet um, beach towel or whatever on the back side of it. This up here is still, I don't know, it's a little dirty, but go ahead and get this thing back together. And that's why a lot of times we run these media filters, which it's not recommended, but you do what you can do. All right, so we're at 45 degrees. I put that in place just a second ago. I think they wanna leave the lights off that way it don't uh, draw people in. There's nothing in there yet, but we've got an orange light there. Look, I don't know if that means that it's wanting to go into defrost or what. I don't know the Dixel control that great. To me, it shows a moon, so I don't know if it means maybe it's coming out of the defrost or maybe it's just getting ready to go into it or maybe it's skipping it. I don't know. But we got 45 there. I would have figured this would have hit temperature by now. We are 44 there, so the thermometer is pretty accurate. Well, that's kind of interesting. That thing shut down. That's must have a magnet. Ah, oh, I want well, it has a temperature sensor. It's interesting. Hmm. So I'm kind of curious when it's too kind of dropping across that. Just about ready to hit it. Of course I opened up the thing, so I mean it's running. I feel like they should probably be cautious if they're gonna use it until I get back. Um, like I said, I got a lot of that carbon crap off the, the relay, but I don't trust it. I prefer they don't use it, but they do whatever they want. So anyhow, guys, we're going to order that and then get them put in and install them. I don't think there's a whole lot more to say about it. It's pretty much swap them out and that'll be the end of it. Everything else checked out fine and most of the work's done. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Till next time. Later.